All right, looks like we've got a week's worth of headlines today alone. There are big developments in the impeachment probe with more revelations almost certainly on the way. It is leading to signs of new cracks within top levels at the White House. President Trump is, an, is attacking an aide to Vice President Mike Pence oh, after sure she Trumper. said the president's Ukraine call oh was God. inappropriate. The president is also fuming about Mike Pompeo for hiring the State Department officials whose testimony threatens to bring down his presidency. Meanwhile, in a surprise move over the weekend, the president abruptly visited Walter Reed Medical Center for what the administration called phase one of his annual physical? A couple of, what was that, a couple Wait. of weeks after last year's physical? Uh, come on, come on. What happened? Yeah. What Lots happened of questions indeed? here, but we start with more evidence that President Trump doesn't have very long political coattails. Little, and, little hands, it, little fingers, You need to do your, <laughs> hey son, you lost again speech. Uh, in Louisiana, Democrat wow. John Bell Edwards on Saturday narrowly won a second term as the state's governor, beating Republican challenger Eddie Rispone by 1.4 percentage points in a state that President Trump carried by nearly 20 points in 2016. Rispone, a wealthy businessman and longtime Republican donor, tied himself to Trump. He often railed against undocumented immigrants on the campaign trail and portrayed Edwards as a, quote, liberal socialist-leading <laughs> governor. But <laughs> Edwards, a conservative, conservative Democrat, <laughs> managed to remain God. fairly popular by frequently breaking with the National Democrats. He signed into law one of the most restrictive abortion bills in the country, favored gun rights, and touted his willingness to work with Republicans. After winning, he had a decidedly Southern message for the president. <laughs> I love this. Shared love for Louisiana is always more important than the partisan differences that sometimes divide us. And as for the president, God bless his heart. Oh, that's never a good sign when you hear that. Oh, my oh gosh, my I God. found that out the hard way. Oh. GOP gubernatorial oh challenger Eddie Rispone came up short despite a flood of support from Boy, Republicans. he worked hard. D Donald Trump, Trump worked so hard Trump to get him Pence. elected. Yeah, take a look at President like, Trump. He threw so much behind this guy. Soon the people of Louisiana will head to the polls. You know, I'm really here for a little different reason. It's called early voting. You believe it? That's how much I like Eddie. I'm here for early voting. You know, you can go out and vote. I said, well, not a lot of people do that. They say in Louisiana, 40% of the vote is early voting. I said, like I said, I think I'll come. I'll come here. But you're going out to replace a radical, liberal Democrat as your governor, John, John Bell Edwards has not done the job. You're going to have a great new Republican, tremendously successful man as your governor, Eddie Rispone. Eddie, Eddie Rispone. So early voting is already underway. And I think I'm coming back here on Thursday. You believe it? I'm doing a double. I'm doing a double. He did a double, Joe. He returned to Louisiana a little more than one week later and started begging. In Kentucky, we elected everybody. The governor got brought up in a few short days, 19 points. I went, we made a speech. The whole ticket was there. Everybody won big. Governor's a really good guy. But 19 points is a big thing, and he lost by just a few thousand votes. And the headlines the next day, Trump took a loss. I lift him up a lot. So Trump took a loss. So you got to give me a big win, please, okay? Okay? Well, that's like he's literally begging. Yeah, I mean, you know, he was begging, and it's sad to watch a president beg. Uh, but, of course, he's lying about Kentucky. Yeah. Because, I mean, it, you know, the thing is, it's incredible. I don't know if anybody knows this or not. But Matt Bevan was up five points right. until Donald Trump went there. Son, you lost, you lost <laughs> six points for him in one day. And it's just. Is that bad, son? Is that bad? It's bad. Donald, you need to check. And you. I'm from the Gulf Coast. How did you lose Louisiana? That's bad. <laughs> How? 
what? How could you do that? I mean, he, and, he, and he's calling the governor down there, what, a socialist? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's Louisiana. Most, that's the most conservative Democrat uh, in a long, long time, Jonathan Lemire. A long, long time. This is, the president went all in. I want, you, I want you to imagine a business owner whose daddy gave him $400 million. Okay. Right? And then that business owner says, I'm going to start casinos in New Jersey. <laughs> right? Imagine that. And imagine a guy whose daddy gave him $400 million. We're just making this up right now. Yeah, okay? there's no basis in reality. $400 million in, in, in today's dollars. Okay. And he decides he's going to start a casino business. And then he ends up $9 billion bank. That's kind of like what this is. Like, how do you as a Republican lose Kentucky and Louisiana? I mean, that's, that's pretty rough. So what, what's the spin inside the White House? Well, right John, John Bell Edwards, as you said, is a conservative Democrat. JB, pro-life, pro-gun, you know. JBE yeah. is not AOC in this, in this scenario. Trump. Right, yes. And it, it did not really distance himself from the president much. Although that was a pretty good kiss off there at the yeah, end. Bless yeah. your heart. Uh, I mean, this is the president. It's a couple of things here. There are people around him. There is no one around him to tell him to stay away from some of these races or tell him that his line of attack is not going to work. You can go in there. Look, the president's very popular in Louisiana. He won it by 20 points. Yeah. But you're not going to go in there and paint the, the governor as a socialist and expect that to win. Right. You know, the governor in Kentucky, yes, the polling was much closer there. But that was a race that there were a few people in his orbit who said maybe you should stay away from. He, of course, didn't, in part because he is so desperate right now to not just feed off of a rally crowd, which we know energizes like nothing else, but to prove that he's still politically vital during impeachment. And instead, there's three Southern governor's races in the last few weeks. He lost two of them. There's political blood in the water. Mississippi was pretty close. Dave Wasserman, let me bring you in. <clears throat> Jonathan has a great point. If the president had anybody around, say, hey, you know what, stay away from Kentucky because, you know, they elect Democratic governors from time to time. Stay away from Louisiana. If you go to Louisiana, don't call Louisiana governor socialist because he's one of the most, con he's more conservative than you are, Donald, like on a lot of issues, and he really is. I, it, it, just, it, it was, I mean, talk about how Donald Trump going down there and, and saying what he said about the socialist governor mm -hmm. really was political malpractice. Well, in fairness, Joe, you know, Rispone was down like 47 points the week before <laughs> right. the election. Right. And, he uh, was. You know, Trump brought him within two points. He had been hit uh, also, little known fact, his campaign bus had been hit by a meteor the week before. <laughs> right? Right. He had died, right, but, brought back to life. <laughs> Trump did it, just touched him. But go ahead. <laughs> right. But look, voters still, have a, voters still have something called a BS detector, and when Trump is going to go down to Louisiana, and by the way, he loves basking, in, you know, before crowds in places where he is popular, and he's still popular there. But if he's going to say that John Bell Edwards is a radical liberal Democrat, look, voters are going to believe that just as much as, you know, if Democrats were to go into New England and call Charlie Baker and, you know, Phil Scott, the governors of Massachusetts and Vermont, uh, you know, some Trump Tea Party conservatives. Right. Voters still make distinctions at this level. Now, the good news for Trump is this is not really a blow to his reelection right. chances. Uh, you know, this is this is an indication that, uh, number one, his uh, the limits of of his uh, transferability of popularity are still there. Right. Uh, and and number two, that, you know, some southern suburbs are now open to voting for the right kind of Democrat, particularly those Catholic suburbs, right. East Jefferson Parish, right outside of New Orleans, <laughs> yeah. a place you probably know well. Yep. Yeah. Obama took 26 percent of the vote there in 2008. John Bell Edwards got 50 percent on Saturday night. So, so Dave, goodness. you bring up a great point. This isn't bad news for, for Donald Trump in, in terms of 2020 in Louisiana or in Kentucky. He'll win those states. It'll be tighter probably than it was before. But it's bad news for every Republican running under ticket uh, it, it, that have to deal with the sub. We're, we're now, I mean, I can't believe we've gotten to a point where we're talking about the suburbs of, of, of Louisiana, you know, of, of, of New Orleans, of, of Baton Rouge, of uh, Shreveport, uh, the suburbs of Dallas, uh, the suburbs of Atlanta. I mean, we're talking about deep south suburbs that are now breaking. That is bad news for Republican candidates, as it was in 2018. But it's also bad news for Trump as you go, for, much worse news for Trump as you go north and talk about the suburbs of Philly, the suburbs of Detroit, the suburbs of Milwaukee. 
Well, the problem, Joe, for Democrats is that there are differences between the suburbs of some of those, you know, those coastal cities and the suburbs of Detroit and Milwaukee, which are still quite Republican and where arguably Trump might have some some room um, for, for growth. Because keep in mind, he was pretty unpopular relative to other Republicans in places like Paul Ryan's backyard, um, in places like Marco Rubio's backyard in 2016. And that New York Times Siena battleground poll uh, that we saw uh, the other week shows that Trump is still running competitively in those places, even if he's running uh, behind nationally. I think Democrats could need to win the popular vote by as much as four points to beat Donald Trump. <clears throat> That's quite a, uh, a head start for the president. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube. And make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.